Right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Stephen. Thanks, everyone, at The Real Truth About Health. Let's get started here. All right. Can you see my screen? Yes. All right. All right. Let's get started. My name is Dr. Sunil Pai. I'm an integrative medicine physician. You may have seen me here many times before at The Real Truth About Health over the last three years. I've given multiple lectures. Uh, today, I'm going to take a different look and a different take. In my book, we talk about lifestyle. We, look at, we provide you in my best-selling book, An Inflammation Nation, the definitive 10 steps of how to prevent and reverse and treat disease by diet and lifestyle and the use of natural anti-inflammatories like Bosmeric SR, which I did speak a little bit about yesterday. But today, you know, in my book, I, I briefly mentioned a couple of things towards, you know, one of the steps. And we're looking at, you know, wellness technologies. And the reason being is because we are all now using technology more than ever. And we are using things like Fitbits and sleep apps and uh, other types of technology to help influence and improve our overall health. In addition to what we want to recommend is lifestyle changes like moving towards a plant-based diet. So let's get started. So in 2020, I did give a lecture. You can go back and I'll talk about, you know, an inflammation nation. I talk about the 10 steps specifically, and, and I give a brief overview. Definitely go back and listen to that lecture if you want to know what inflammation is. And then in 2021, you know, right after we finished leaving the conference in 2020, the pandemic hit actually. And we were, I was leaving the, the airport in New York when the first people from uh, overseas were coming back actually positive testing for COVID at that time. And so we gave a lecture in 2021, you know, right in the first year of the pandemic of, you know, from COVID to chronic disease, all the way to cancer, how to lower inflammation safely and effectively go back to that. Because now that the pandemic is predominantly over, now it's an endemic. We still have to look at how do we lower long haul or how do we lower these complications, even if we get other kind of diseases and how inflammation affects everything and how we can lower inflammation by diet, lifestyle, use of natural anti-inflammatories, and also how to increase your immune system functioning. Very, very important in that lecture. And then later on in 2022, I gave a lecture on the stacking effects of inflammation because that goes to the next step level further of how like foods can stack in your diet, how inflammatory foods, even eating plant foods, how we look at food sensitivities, how we look at inflammation coming from other environmental factors like toxicities and uh, uh, chemical exposures and how we have to look at all those and how they all build even emotional inflammation from stress. And finally, I gave a lecture on the microbiome, which is super important. And for those who need to understand more about what a microbiome is, how do you tune up your microbiome, repair and restore it, go back and listen to my lecture in 2022. However, today I'm going to talk about something different because in my book, An Inflammation Nation, I did mention briefly a couple of things. I did mention something called uh, pulse electromagnetic field therapies and also some enhancement water technologies. And those technologies since that publication of the book have even improved even more. So we're going to talk about today about PEMAs and also water enhancement. Now, the challenges, as you know, and I've met and mentioned before, and you'll see and hear from all the different speakers on this conference, is that the rise of inflammatory diseases, which is I, which I specialize and talk about, you know, emotional, psychological stress, standard American diet, the actually toxic air and pollution and the depleted soil, our lifestyle, the financial stress that we've all been going through, the chemical exposures that seem to be increasingly rising, uh, polypharmacy, everybody's on multiple, multiple pharmaceuticals, lack of sleep, lack of exercise, weakening immune system. And also this newer uh, issue over the last 10 years is electro smog. So I, Albert Einstein mentioned in, and said, you know, the future of medicines will be the medicine of frequencies. And also Nikola Tesla said that if you want to find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. So the next things I'm going to talk about is going to be about what these two gentlemen were speaking about. We're looking at a new frontier in medicine. So a side of diet, which is simple, which everybody can afford, and lifestyle, which people can change, and we will guide them through that, is we're looking at a new frontier, something called electroceuticals. You know, our body's electric, and we're now looking at, can we use um, bioinformation? Can we use non-invasive you know, non frequencies and subtleties of energy that will help us in our optimization of our health? Uh, we look at informational medicine now. We look at quantum medicine now. 
bioenergetic medicine now. Like, you know, we've been, you know, for thousands of years using like Reiki and Marma therapy and Ayurveda and Chinese medicine using acupuncture. And now we've moved into a level of technologies in the last, you know, 20, 30 years of actually using electronics or technologies, computers and different types of devices. And now we're looking at electroceuticals, meaning just like a nutraceutical, which is a food that you consume, like plant foods predominantly, that we'd use to help with biological responses in terms of improving our health. Now we're looking at how can we actually use energy medicine to do something very similar and deliver health to each and every cell. Now, just like our computers, just like our electronics, we actually have our own internal batteries. Our cellular function actually over time gets low. And so we need to learn how to recharge that battery. And we do that, you know, in our practice, we can actually test and look at mitochondrial function, look at, you know, various antioxidant function, look at electron transport chain function. We can actually measure these things. But what we're looking at now is that the body is electric. So aside of using nutrition, which is optimus and optimally the most important thing to do, eating a plant-based diet, which my book covers in my lectures previously do. But now we're looking at what else can we use since each cell vibrates at a specific frequency. Right. And we now know that, you know, there's a higher residency with certain health aspects. There's a higher residency in healthier foods. And we're trying to get to that back to that natural state of being in that healthier electrical field. Right. And we all know that sometimes we feel burned out. We also feel overcharged. Like if you went to uh, Las Vegas, for example, some people feel not very healthy. They feel like this aside of the maybe the, the late night shows or or eating bad food, but just a lot of that electromagnetic smog and just that overstimulus can feel uh, make us feel worse. And that yet we all like to go out to say Yellowstone or go out to Costa Rica and have a wonderful time in nature, feeling grounded again and, and getting back to our roots. So today I'm going to talk about well, advanced wellness technology. These are exclusively patented products. You can go down to the website below, centropics.us backslash rockdoc to learn more about these. But I'm going to go briefly into detail. And if you go to our website at sanjevani.net, S-A-N-J-E-V-A-N-I.net, you can actually sign up for a newsletter. And then we're going to be going over webinars about each of these things in the future. Uh, you know, in specific detail, and we'll be inviting the specific doctors and scientists who have been involved in creating these types of technologies as well. So pulse electromagnetic fields, right? This is something that most of us now have heard about in the last maybe six to 10 years, although it's been around since the 70s. It's widely accepted. And particularly when it started in medicine, you know, it started really with orthopedics. Orthopedics started using this really early on because they were seeing increasing improving in bone fractures healing, right? So there was ways that people would be able to put a, a, a wrap their, their joint or their leg when it was broken, and they'd have to turn on a device that would send a pulse electromagnetic field, and that would accelerate the bone health healing. Now we're talking about a pulse. So it's a, it's a pulse. It's not on continuously. Like when we have our cell phones on or our computers on, that's just an EMF that's constantly going at one signal. We're talking about different pulses. So it's not a constant signal and at different frequencies and intensities. There's decades of document uh, benefits of this. And more importantly, even NASA has been using this technology because when people go to space, they actually, due to lack of gravity, have problems with bone density, have problems with muscle relaxation and, and even uh, nerve and, and, and uh, other types of physiological problems. And so this is one way that we can also help them with recovery. There is over 800 studies on PEMFs on PubMed. So it's not, again, it's nothing new. It's not just a few things, but we now have to look at the specificity of certain signals and what can be better for you and what can be worse. Now, even in 1998, Dr. Ignario, who's one of the Nobel Prize winners of, of, of explaining how um, nitric oxide, which is a molecule which I'll talk about in a second, works, is that he actually wrote that this may be the final century of electrotherapy. PMEF is a simple, cost-effective, and has no known side effects. He was talking specifically about the use of these type of uh, technologies in um, healing from plastic surgery or any kind of surgical aspect, because it's looking at how we can actually enhance the cellular function energetically of healing. 
And the interesting thing and the nice thing now we have about science is that previously we weren't really sure how, you know, most companies will talk about uh, PMEF devices and, you know, everybody likes to borrow everybody else's data. But when we look at PMEFs, now we understand the true mechanism of action by Dr. Naro's work. What we look at is the PMEFs actually will stimulate, you know, calcium and what they call a cell adhesion molecule. And this will increase a binding in milliseconds. This then eventually creates what they call NO. And NO is nitric oxide. And we all know that nitric oxide is super important for increasing blood and also lymphatic flow, right? It has anti-inflammatory uh, benefits. And that's why when we eat a plant-based diet, for example, we're creating nitric oxide from plant foods, right? So that's why when you go to the store now, you see like, you know, beet shots and pomegranates and all these kind of wonderful foods that we get because nitric oxide is a vasodilator. It helps vasodilate ourselves. People also take supplements like L-arginine. We provide it in a sustained release, L-arginine sustained release form for also helping people blood pressure, but you can eat those foods. But now we can actually induce that same mechanism from a technology, right? Because some people can eat well, but we still have physiological problems. We might have neuropathy due to a chemotherapy that we had to take for treating our cancer, or we might have an injury that, you know, the there's scarring tissue in our vascular blood flow, and we need to have help improve that flow of healing of, of lymph and of blood cells coming in and out. So, this nitric oxide is very important because it helps with blood pressure, helps it flow, and helping improving vascular flow is key to overall health because that's why we encourage exercise and yoga and stretching and movement. Lack of movement and stagnation increases the disease, all diseases. And also, we now know that nitric oxide over time will also create collagen production and remodeling. Now, yesterday I spoke about the dangerous use of NSAIDs, right? Particularly ibuprofen, naproxen, and, and silicoxib, right? Which are Motrin and Advil's and Aleve's and Celebrex and all. And those non steroidal anti-inflammatories actually decrease collagen, right? They actually, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, please go back to my previous lecture on instead of taking ibuprofen, if you take that, take this instead. Um, we'll talk about what you can take to lower your inflammation that won't be depleting collagen. But now everybody's got knee problems that are worsening because they're taking something for their inflammation. But nitric oxide is super important. And now we understand mechanism of action of PMEF. Now, there's cells in our body, and the average adult has about 100 trillion of these cells. And as we age and as we're going on, 50 million cells die every minute. So we're always looking at antioxidants through the diet, an anti-inflammatory lifestyle, and lowering the toxicity of the chemical exposures. And you know, here we see we see here protons, and we see neutrons, and we see spinning of electrons. This is on a molecular level, on a small, tiny scientific level of how cellular function is working. But the foods and the environment affect this, and now we have technologies that actually can also enhance this. The cloud is what we call is best in class frequency. Why? Because it's a patented frequency. It's a therapy. It's a wellness technology. We're talking about wellness technologies, actually. And these are actually to stimulate and activate your molecules to recharge your body. Again, for those who are interested, go to centropics.us backslash rockdoc for more information. And it's a mat. And I'll talk about it a little bit, but it's 15 minutes a day. You lay on the mat and really protects, performs, and helps you recover. It's the most effective frequency range of any bioresonance device. Now, why do I say that? And how can I say that? Because the cloud actually uses uh, what we consider the new Kafka signal. Okay. And Dr. Kafka has recently patented some many more parts of the broadband, or we now we call extreme broadband, of the PEMA devices, and now we call it pulse electromagnetic activation because it's actually activating the cells, right? And with this new patented signal, actually set of signals, it gives you faster results, stronger performance, a deeper impact, and actually now is incorporating multiple frequencies. Now, let's talk about just in short, what is the aspect and history of frequency therapy when we talk about PMEFs? So traditionally, you know, in the 70s, 80s, 90s, and even now, if you go on the internet or if you go on any kind of online retailer and say PEMEF device, you'll see a variety of them. 
Some of them are about, you know, maybe a couple hundred dollars. Some of them are tens of thousands of dollars, right? And they all are using what they call conventional narrow band, sawtooth band, sine waves. These were the original kind of signals that were used from these devices that actually did stimulate and, you know, again, had some benefits. Most products on the market are this today. Okay. And that's why, like, when I had a patient the other day who had a, actually a bone fracture many, many years ago, and she said, Oh, my orthopedic doctor had me wear this device and I had to wear it eight hours a day. It did heal her body, but then she also did have to wear it a long period of time. But what's happening since then in the evolution of this technology is that in 1998, Dr. Kafka patented what we call this broadband signal. And this broadband signal was able to give 1,200 amplitudes per, per second, and thus activated more cells in the body in a positive fashion. It was patented and this became the gold standard. In fact, since 1998, you know, some major companies and, and some of the devices that are the most successful that people have used in clinics, in their personal homes and athletes were using this technology because that was the gold standard compared to what the traditional you know, uh, broad bands and narrow bands and square tooth, saw tooth were given on the market. But more importantly, since 1998, as Dr. Kafka and as the as signals were, uh, this, this patent was being expired, he was continuously working over the last 10 years on other signals and other parts of this uh, frequency medicine. And he ended up patenting and bringing out what they call the extreme broadband, or we call it the Kafka signal, right? And so this is now activating even more cells in the body. And with this broadband extreme um, frequency therapy, it has 12, 20,000 amplitudes per millisecond. So it's, it's a very unique and it's, it's, we call it the next level up from what we used to use very successfully. Uh, most people have used these, but now we're moving to something else where not only is doing something very similar, but we're now having additional added benefits. Now, this is a new category creator because, as you can see here, this was the, the square wave, again, that most uh, companies were using for, for many years. And most products on the market are, again, square wave and sawtooth. And then, again, in 1998, when, they, when, when, the, when the broadband signal you know, that Dr. Kafka patented, that, as you can see here, that's this. And now with this expanded, you know, we call extreme broadband, it's really interesting because it has this superposition folded exponential form. And this creates this dual stereo effect, meaning it, it has this, a, a better effect on the cellular function. And now through these frequencies, since we're actually adding a lot of frequencies into one, but that intensity can be changed and modified, then there's different programs. Now, this is key because most people will use a product. And you know, traditionally, these, people used to have these ropes. Some of the clinics would have, like, especially sports therapy or some of the, some of the you know, uh, cancer clinics would have these things. You know, they, were like, they looked like you know, large like, uh, hoses. People would wrap them around them, and they'd have one big dial, and you can turn on the dial and turn it up and down. But we now understand that more is not better. Just like I spoke yesterday with natural medicines or even prescription drugs, more is not better. It's finding the right dose the right amount that gives you the best response and, and the least amount of side effects. So the key is finding those frequencies and the cloud has been able to show and demonstrate that benefit. Now, what happens is that when we have that right frequency and intensity and that extreme broadband, which has been patented, has been delivered to the, uh, the body, it actually has this cascade effect in the body. Remember, going back to the mechanism of action, which I showed you before, is that now we're calling, you know, this this cascade is stimulating that nitric oxide. Molecular activation creates chemical reactions, separates the blood, improves the blood flow. Better blood flow has better cell metabolism. So for every disease, from heart disease to diabetes, to actually improving the delivery of your plant-based nutrition of, say, for example, anti-inflammatory like bosmeric or glucan 300 for your immune system or vitamin D, and also improving your hydration, the cascading effect is what's happening. Now, the interesting thing is that when we have given the studies of looking at how long these last, when someone does a PMEA device now, especially the cloud, the cloud's been shown to have a 12-hour effect when we use this device. Traditionally, in, in Germany and Europe, they've done studies where they were comparing different devices, and all of them will have a benefit, but all of them also turn off, meaning once they stop the 10-minute or 15-minute session, the physical benefits stop also. That's why, like that patient that I just mentioned earlier that had a broken bone, she had to wear her device for eight hours a day. 
But now we have is a technology that when you turn it on for 15 minutes, it will last run, running this cascade effect in the body for up to 12 hours each session. So when we look at molecular activation in real time, now this is a cell culture. It's not in human, anim, uh, human uh, model right here, but this is very important because when we, we always learn from these kind of studies, what's happening, right? So we can see like, is there a positive or negative benefit? So we're looking at connective tissue fibroblasts, like healing. So remember like when Dr. Ignario was talking about uh, these kind of therapies used for wound healing or skin healing, and say, for example, from plastic surgeries or any kind of surgery for that matter, then here we are looking at connective tissue in, in a, on a Petri dish. And we're looking at here at the bottom with the cloud signal. And you can see that the, through the molecular activation, the PEMA, especially the cloud signal that's been patented, that dual patented effect here, you get that stereo effect, it's actually increasing the fibroblast to grow faster. And you can actually see if you had a bigger screen, you'd actually see the cells are actually more active here than when they're without the cloud. Okay, so we actually can see wound healing much faster. In fact, in our clinic, what we do, since I've written it and published in five integrative medicine textbooks, the use uh, of natural therapies for peripheral neuropathy, a lot of patients that have peripheral neuropathy also have diabetes, and they also may have wounds on their, on their lower extremities. And now we can use these kind of technologies to enhance the wound healing of a patient very successfully. Now, the cloud actually comes with a folded uh, applicator where you lay on the mat, but you can also fold it up. And as you fold it up, it actually increases the intensity of each signal. So you can fold it up, put it on the floor, put it on your feet if you had neuropathy or put it on a shoulder or a knee. Or what most people do is put it on a bed, put it on a chair, put it on a um, gravity-free chair, for example, and they can just lay on it for 15 minutes and get the benefits. Now, going further than the old what we call broadband in 1998, which again, most of us would use uh, traditionally. Now the cloud has expanded. So with those new signals that we can now have specific programs before it used to be like everybody got the, the benefit and then all you could do is increase the intensity. But now we have some specificities, meaning we have different applications of those frequencies. And there's five actually that are, are programmed. So again, you don't have to worry about that. All you can do is go up and down on intensity, but there's five programs, one to relax, one to balance, one to energize, one to synchronize, and one to transform. It's only twice a day that people can use it. You can even use it once a day if you want to for 15 minutes. But what we do is, for example, energize. I use the energize and I recommend patients to use energize in the morning. Most people are a little bit tired. They need a little bit of boost or my athletes, they need a boost prior to their uh, fitness or their training or their event. Or more importantly, as you, many of you know, I'm called the rock doc. And so that's why you see backslash rock doc on, uh, on these URLs. But you know why, why they call me rock doc? Because I work with a lot of musicians and, and A-list celebrities. But with the musicians, you know, they need to energize. They're, they're performing. Same thing with athletes. They're performing an event two hours, sometimes three hours, really, really hard on their bodies, really, really hard on the time zones and traveling. How do we give their energy to kind of boost up rather than them drinking caffeine or some kind of stimulant? We want to do it naturally. They can actually improve their overall physical function. But then also, most of us, when by the time we get into the evening, we might be overramped, right? Like we've been doing so much work. We're having our mind and our body trying to calm down. Now, even though I teach in our practice and here at San Giovanni, we teach meditation and mindfulness and how to improve heart rate variability, is that sometimes it's just hard to calm down. It's hard to relax. So I tell people that have trouble with sleeping or have a little bit of insomnia or just a little bit of, I'm just buzzing around a little bit, then we can put them on a relaxed mode in the evening. And although it increases the cellular function, right? We're improving that nitric oxide all around the body, but we also can turn the frequencies of the cells down. And as we turn the cells of the frequencies down, the person feels more calm and relaxed. Actually, in our practice, we actually have here at San Giovanni, we have a flotation tank, one of the first practices in the country to actually have a flotation tank uh, for now over uh, 12, 15 years. But when we have this tank, you know, people want to get into this tank and they, they want to absorb the, the magnesium, you know, through their skin. It's a 10 inch tank has 1200 uh, pounds of Epsom salt, for example, and they float, you know, on the, in the water there. But when we put people on the cloud before the flotation tank, then what happens is we're increasing that nitric oxide, we're improving the vascular flow, we're calming the cells, and then when they get into the tank, they actually absorb more of that magnesium through their skins, providing a better benefit of the anti-inflammatory effects of the 
uh, uh, magnesium that they get it in the flotation tank and provides them multiple days of additional benefits of using flotation therapy. So this technology also is a synergizer. We can use it with other things. We can use it prior to their event, prior to their exercise, and also post event in terms of recovery, right? We also have things like balance, which we need to have more balance. And then we also have things for transformation. We use a lot of transformation because with the intensity and the, the signals of the transform program, it actually has a little bit of an immune benefit, a little bit. When I have patients that have needing more healing aspects, they have a little bit of a chronic issue, a chronic disease. There's a little bit of a bump in that immune system functioning in terms of repairing that. And then for those people who are just new to the technology and they just want to feel a little bit grounded, a little bit calm, just nudge them very, very gently. Some people are very, very sensitive. I'll tell you that in a minute myself, very, very sensitive to technologies. Then synchronize is a great place to start. So these are the nice things because as we're getting all the vascular benefits, all the metabolic benefits, we also have different programs that people can use so that individualize what their needs may be. And so the cloud benefits, again, we're molecular activating, we're recharging the cells of the body. We're helping endurance, energy, and performance. For most of my patients, rapid recovery and regeneration is super important, whether you're a professional athlete or you're just working in construction or you work a, you know, a retail job on your feet all day and your body's achy at the end of the day. Can you help recovery so that you can be back and work in action the next day? Yes. You know, weight management is it's not going to help you lose weight directly, but anytime we improve vascular flow, what we're doing is we're also improving the blood flow to tissue. And that also helps with increasing metabolic function. So when people are taking a plant-based diet, which will help lower their blood sugar, or if they are taking blood sugar medicines, how we actually get that metabolic activity is in, to improve the blood sugar reduction is actually in the muscle tissues, which is the highest, right? So actually when people take their medications and they're hydrating really well, we actually can improve their, their physiological response. And therefore, we can actually see this enhancement with metabolic function improvement with the use of the cloud. It also has been shown, and we see myself and with all our patients, increase alertness and mental acuity, concentration, stress reduction, and again, as I mentioned, sleep management, because we can have that relaxed function that people can be using. Now, the advantages that this has, this technology, over other technologies you'll see, is that it's patented. Um, and it has this breakthrough signal, right? So everybody used to use this previous broadband and then Dr. Kafka then added more. And that's nice because now we can individualize it. It is light, it's portable, it's wireless. So unlike the other devices, which we used to have cords and we used to have this big box, a lot of, a lot of products have boxes, you know, and they have to plug in. And that's just the technology of the time. But the benefit now is that everything is kind of pre-built in. So it, there's actually a, the, whole, the whole unit is actually inside the mat. So you don't have to worry about carrying something else. It's all wirelessly charged. You can, uh, sorry, uh, wired charge USB, so you can pull it off. And then it has a, um, a, a rechargeable battery and you can go several weeks with using it without plugging it in. And it's also very, very friendly because it also comes with an option for using a free app that you can download and then you can just control it from your phone and then you can adjust the frequencies, the intensities and the programs that you like. Nice function, it even turns off and it actually it records the sessions of how many times. And so you can also track, patients can track like, you know, I've been using this so many times, I've been using that so many times and then notice how they feel and adjust kind of their, their wellness technology therapy per their use. So it comes in two sizes, one's uh, a large size, which we recommend for most people. Some people like the mini uh, because they can travel with it a lot easier or they have other applications like putting on the backside of a chair when they work or when they're driving in a truck or a car or, or a van for long periods of times. And some people like to get both. Again, you can go to centropics.us backslash rock doc to find out more. Now, a lot of people say, well, where is when you say PMEAA? on this electromagnetic spectrum. And you can see that it's over here, right? So here's your computer, here's your radio, AM and FM. And then and here, here's actually your cell phone and Wi-Fi, right? So this, that's why you know we are sensitive. A lot of us, myself included, unfortunately, is sensitive to these signals. When they're pulsed and they're lower frequency, we don't really have much of an issue. I don't have an issue at all, and I'm super sensitive. But when it comes to cell phones and computers for long periods of time, as that technology gets stronger, which we all want, 
We all want better signals. We all want better Wi-Fi signals. We all now have there's you know hundreds of satellites that are being launched every year into space, and everybody now has uh, uh, Wi-Fi extenders in their home to go through walls. And and even when you turn on your your Wi-Fi or your routers uh, to pick up your Wi-Fi, most people will know. I mean, I experience this all the time. My patients will tell me this all the time as well. Every time they're connecting a new device in their home, they can actually pick 10 or 15 other Wi-Fi extenders in their neighborhood, right? Some of the people are just down the street. That's how far these signals are going. And so people can pick up other businesses. And so we're constantly getting this exposure of that. And what is that doing to us? Well, we now understand that there's what they call electrosmog. This is this, what we call an invisible danger. We can't hide from it. This is just part of our life going forward. And it's going to get more and more technology. And a lot of people, for example, who do live in apartment buildings, who live in high rises, you know, in, in the dense cities, they're getting you know, bombarded even more. Why? Because it's not only just the house next door, but now we're talking about people above them, people below them in each, every room. Everybody has uh, uh, kids that are gaming with all their technology or uh, all of us who work with IT or work with other technologies. Here in my office, I got two screens. I got two large computers. I got a laptop. I got cell phone, right? And I got an iPad, right? So these are things that we're, we all use every day, but we're understanding that the radiation exposure you know, compared to 10 years ago is one quintillion, right? Going back, you know, even when we're all younger children, we didn't have this exposure, but now you can't go anywhere. Even if you try to go on a vacation, you know, you still got to be connected, right? So even if you go to a, a remote island, they're still going to have Wi-Fi sometimes or a top of a mountain, we're still going to have Wi-Fi. Again, it would be nice to be in a place that we could be away from these things, but we have to be connected today, right? We have to be, have email. We have to have our business. We have to do our banking, for example. So everything is online. The problem is that this is becoming too much um, electro smog. And the data now shows, and for some of us who are sensitive, you know, increasing headaches, uh, re- you know, sleep problems, memory problems, it can alter, affect damage, particularly the closer you are to these technologies. So a lot of people, again, in apartment complexes or homes where they're sleeping on, you know, behind their bedrooms, behind their, what we call the electrical panel or the, you know, the, these um, signal units, these uh, Wi-Fi uh, electrical units that are sending the signal back to the city government on the electrical uses. They have the worst um, electrosmog symptoms because there's higher signals. So we're looking at what can we do to help protect those people. Like me, I'm super sensitive. I have to use these technologies. So I'm not someone who say, well, I'm just going to you know, shut off everything and go away. I have to embrace and adapt because you know, the next phone is going to be stronger. The next computer chip is going to be stronger. Um, and we need to understand on certain people who are very sensitive, unfortunately, like myself, Um, we now use what we call frequency regulators. We're trying to balance the frequency of the devices that are giving us a constant signal, not the PEMA or the PMEF, that's a pulse signal, but the constant one intense high signal that is given that we need to use these technologies. So we have two technologies that are are available for the people who are sensitive. One's called the cocoon. Uh, That's more of an environmental uh, regulator. And one is called the bubble, which is a personal uh, EMF protecting device. Now, the data also shows us recently in Germany, they were doing some studies and that just with the electro smog, the brain immediately shows an increase in stress. Right. And then the perception of the patients is disturbed. It's actually disturbed, you know, our, our cognition, access to the pineal gland, and the connection to the subconsciousness is altered. And that's why, for example, when we're online, you know, when people are, you know, especially during the pandemic, we all were disconnected with, you know, seeing people in person. And so then we connected online. We were on our cell phones. And yes, there's bad things with the algorithms. And yes, there's bad things with social media playing with our psychology. And that's been proven and shown every day in the studies. However, also that technology of just being on a device for so long, hours a day, I think it's like six hours, the average person now is on social media on their phones a day, is that that is actually creating a higher stress, not just with the algorithms that are already stressing us out, but actually that technology. And so that's why a lot of people say, you know what, I'm going to get social media off. I'm going to kind of take a cell phone break or weekend off, or uh, I'll go on a retreat. And the cool thing about the retreat is like no cell phones. And it sounds really interesting because like, wow, you know, like just put your phone away. You can do that at home. But people need to get away 
from that. But when they do, they feel so much less stress because just the electro smog of that influence of, you know, in the field, now we can have studies showing that subtleness. Now, I'm not going to get into detail here. I, it, you know, we'll, we'll do this on my podcast. Again, if you go to our website, sangevini.net, uh, you'll sign up. We'll be talking about this in more specific detail with the scientists, but there, in physics, there's two types of waves. It's a transverse wave, longitudinal wave. And really, you know, for the average person to understand, even for myself to understand even better, it's the idea of noise canceling. You know, we all have these. A lot of people are very familiar. If you travel a lot, you go on the plane, you'll see people wearing headsets. And, and some of the headsets are, you know, what they call noise canceling. They're giving a frequency to kind of counterbalance the noise, right? So you're on a loud plane and there's a baby crying or the engine behind you in the, in the seat's really loud or just loud t- someone talking. And you put on these headsets, you turn it on, and it's sending a signal, it's sending a frequency that is kind of counterbalancing. And then all of a sudden it's calm or it's quieter in the headset. So what we're looking at with these devices is blocking actually these two types of waves. So it's not just a single wave, it's doing both. And the first technology that's for the environment is called the cocoon. The cocoon is what we call your family guardian. It actually, the device or the wellness technology, more importantly, will actually give you an 82 foot shield of protection. So it's great for those people who live in a home, live in an apartment, and who are sensitive, right? So if you've got tons of kids, you got tons of animals, you got tons of computers, and some of them may have like um, ADHD issues or sleeping issues or behavior issues, or they're sensitive like me. Like I have to put everything in airplane mode. I have to cover my router. Otherwise, I get really have really bad uh, sleep issues. Uh, some people like me, if, or we're holding things or working too long, our hands can get hot or we can get achy. Um, this is not something that we're making up. This is actually, you know, I would not, I would love not to have this problem and be able to be on a computer or hold a phone, you know, or even wear uh, an Apple watch or something like that. But for some of us, we're very, very sensitive. So we have to look at ways to kind of still use the technology, but still also not being negatively affected. And this is something that actually will go above and below the ground. So if you were to put a unit, say, in, in a, an apartment, then the, actually the person above you and the person below you would also have some benefit and they will thank you later for that protection. And, in, and the cool thing about the, the um, cocoon is that it also has frequency cards. So instead of just only the e-smog protector, it actually comes with a few cards and there's other optional cards where, like I was talking about the noise canceling, that we actually can also then also provide and extend into that 80-foot uh, field uh, a different type of frequency, right? They have one actually called Hawaii Harmony, which is kind of great. You know, they measured, you know, certain frequencies in different environments and also different conditions. And Hawaii, like when you go to Hawaii, there's actually a different frequency in the on the on, on the islands and so when they match that frequency it's kind of like feeling like you're on a vacation right yeah there's there's frequencies that help you sleep and they have optional ones that people can use for more like they have more inflammation or discomfort they have they need some more uh help with their healing response or you know they have animals which are very sensitive or you know misbehaving or they need to improve concentration say their students or or they're studying in the home how do we actually you know relax or people who are in sports and fitness these are ways that we can again not only block the negative but also give a positive benefit so those people just aside of their lifestyle number one aside of eating a plant-based diet number one and doing all the 10 steps that i talk about in my book these are additional things that will advance us and help us because you know you can't control everything in your environment so this is where we're trying to use technology now, one of the interesting things I like to say from a personal standpoint is that we put this in our workplace because this is where most people will use it. Side of the home, you know, people that use it for home, you know, I, we have an office and, you know, we have homes around us. And so, we, you know, we pick up everybody's Wi-Fi as well. And, you know, what, I'm a, what we consider an open-minded skeptic. I'm a scientist. I'm, a, I'm an author. I'm a physician. But, you know, I'm, I'm evidence-based. And so we want to look at, well, where's the evidence? And also I test everything, you know, when we make things, we formulate them. We try it for, for sometimes years before we even release it uh, on our patients and, you know, open it to the public because we want to ensure that there is some kind of benefit. We're not just trying to promote something. And so what happens is I actually put one of these devices, the cocoon, in our office in a place that I didn't tell any of my staff. It came in on the weekend when everybody was gone. And I put it actually above something in our store so that people wouldn't see it. And I just turned it on. I put a couple of the cards that I thought we were having a lot of stress. We're having a little bit of tension in the office, you know, and, you know, practices always get busy. Right. And sometimes, you know, employees have their own personal issues and everybody can have that. And everybody's experienced the bit stress can be uh, businesses, especially small businesses. 
can be a little bit sometimes stressful, right? And just because everybody, you know, there was a hard uh, pandemic, there was uh, issues with inflation. And, and so everybody was having a little bit of a stress. And so I turned it on and then just started to see if I could notice anything. An interesting thing, which is, which is quite interesting, is that it was like got, people got calmer, people were focusing better, the tension, you know, in, in the office got a little bit improved without doing anything, right? And like, I didn't tell anybody, I just was trying to see like, you know, and then this went for several months. Everything was great, 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 great. Then a little bit of stress started to occur. A little bit, you know, and I'm like, you know, what's happening? You know, what's going on? So I went back because I, I left it there. I didn't want to have it showing for everybody. And the um, cleaners by mistake unplugged the electrical outlet uh, with the vac for doing the vacuum cleaner. And so I just had to go back and replug it in. And then now we're back to the same baseline, what we were before of having this calmness from this EMF signal that is being sent down. So this is kind of interesting. That's our personal story, but I wanted to share that because this is something that, you know, again, people try it. Uh, you know, uh, w once I put this in one of my parents' houses and uh, m with my mom, particularly, she noticed decrease in, in her pain immediately. And in fact, I would actually turn it on for a couple of days and turn it off and then see if there was any difference without telling her again, <laughs> this is not what we're, sometimes what scientists do. And it would actually correlate with the on or off uh, with her symptoms. So quite interesting. Now we have put it in multiple places in our family. Now, what I wear particularly in what is one of the most important things is that if you're someone who say, well, hey, I have um, sensitivity, but my family does it. And, you know, it's just really more of my issue. And I don't want to be like imposing something on other people or for cost reasons. I don't want to get something. So I just want something that's more for me. They have something what they call the bubble. It is the first active technology PEMA, PMEF, frequency generator device that actually is for blocking your personal body of the harmful effects of e-smog. But more importantly, it does have these other benefits. It, oops, it has EMF protection. It has skin optimization. It can help metabolic enhancement, cellular recharging, cellular hydration. But my favorite thing here is heart rate variability improvement. Now, I actually am wearing one today. I, I wear it every day, actually. And so you can see it here. It says bubble. Now, they're showing it here in the picture outside the skin because they're trying to show you, the, you know, in the video here. But it actually has to be touching the skin. That's why most people who wear these things, most people won't know that you're wearing it because it's actually touching the skin in the thymic area. And that's where some of the improvement of the immune system functioning is by some of the signals that we're sending. But let me talk about heart rate variability for a second. Now, heart rate variability or or otherwise term sometimes heart rate coherence is a very important part of our practice. And then particularly with patients who want to look at living longer, if you're a cancer patient, you have chronic disease, you know, heart rate variability has been shown in clinical studies, you know, that have been published in tens of thousands of patients that those people who have their heart rate variability in the balanced zone, okay, is that they actually end up living the longest. Stage four cancer patients who are in the zone of heart rate variability live the longest regardless of their treatment. You know, patients that have the heart rate variability actually have been shown before and after to lower their inflammation naturally. Immune system function, natural killer cell function will increase when someone's heart rate variability and their coherence is in the smooth, you know, uh, zone, what we call it, aspect. So how do we do that? Now, in our practice, we teach meditation, we teach mindfulness, and there's other technologies. And so I didn't have time to talk about it today because that's a whole lecture and we will give other people to come in to do the uh, discussions with the scientists because there's troves of data now on that. But if you go to sanjevani.net, S-A-N-J-E-V-A-N-I.net, sign up for our newsletter, that'd be great because we're going to be actually interviewing the scientists and doctors who actually study heart rate variability. And we can talk about how we teach our patients in our practice, how when someone is stressed or frustrated, you know, even if they are doing meditation, we can now measure if someone's in their zone or not. And there's ways to shift that frustration to appreciation just by how you think, how you how you're reading or how you're smelling or how you or seeing or listening. There's different technologies, but there's also different practices. And we want to teach people different ways to actually get into this, uh, th this heart rate coherence naturally. This will make every diet, every supplement, every medication work better. Now, why am I spending so much time on this? Because 
This is a practice. When people use these other technologies for improving heart rate variability, it's like learning to meditate, for example, or being mindful. And you know, you got to do it 10, 15 minutes a day, 20 minutes a day, twice a day, maximally, and that will provide amazing benefits. And that's why those people who are super healthy do, do some type of practice, right? That's why I encourage it every day. And that's why we, we practice these things every day. However, the cool thing is with the technology in the bubble, right? And it's actually the inside of the bubble. So it's actually technology. It's not just a little blinking light as people might think it is. It's actually circuitry. And there's, there's a science behind this, this, um, this application is that when we look at the studies on using the bubble just passively, meaning just wearing it, the cool thing is it increases the heart rate variability 18%. Now, it's not 100%. We can practice and train someone to do meditation to do 100%, for example. But isn't that interesting that I can just wear something that's helping me with my EMF protection, right? And increasing my heart rate variability 18%. But also, here's the cool thing, is it increases you know, relaxation, rejuvenation, improvement, 39%. Stress index goes down by 14%. And total energy improvement, about 37%. So it's kind of a nice thing. It's like for those people who are sensitive like I am, the problem is when you get sensitive, you also get tired, right? You just get like more achy, you get exhausted, and that creates a higher stress level. So the nice thing that aside of just counterbalancing the negative frequencies, we're actually in, you know, creating this balance. Now, obviously, if someone did heart rate coherence practices, which again, go back uh, and sign up to our website, we'll give you some therapies and we'll talk about that in the future. But this is something that I can use every day. And I do notice it like I take it off. I get a little bit more stress. I put it on. It helps me feel more calm. Recently, I actually went to Las Vegas. I had to go for a conference and haven't been there for the last three years. So it was kind of a stressful thing. You know, now post pandemic, Vegas is very crazy. And I, you know, I did my little test on myself because when I go there, I get very achy. There's just so much technology. There's so much machinery going on. And it really helped me through you know, just going through the casinos, sitting down at dinner and, you know, talking to people without kind of getting a little bit of uh, antsy. I get a little bit of anxiousness and sometimes I just, I got to go lay down or sometimes I actually have to go outside and try to get away as much as possible. So the bubble is something that definitely can be very, very important and helpful for those people who want more an individual EMF frequency regulator protector with other health benefits. Now I'm going to switch over to the other part of my lecture, which is going to be talking about water enhancement technologies. You know, Leonardo da Vinci said the water is the driving force of all for all nature. And it is, you know, water at a source, as we know, is natural. It has a has energy, it's flowing, it has information, and it's abundance, right? This life force is energy. We all know that, especially if you've seen water at its source. If you've ever been to Costa Rica or you went to the Amazon or any other place that has like, you know, waterfalls, or you went to the top of the mountains and you hear the the the, the little streams and the rivers that are flowing, there's this life force that you can see. Life is always higher around the energy of the water, but it's that water that's coming directly from nature. You know, life force, you know, is energy, and that's the sense the essential for the whole holist, holistic well-being, meaning our body, as you know, is 70% water, but our cells, we have 100% cells, right? From our microbiome to our cells in our immune system, they all use the water. So even though, yes, we're 70% water, all our cells use water. And so the key is making sure that water is as optimum for our whole being and our total health. And so we now know through science that this is quite new for many people who might be listening to this lecture, but water actually carries memory. It has information. And for those people who don't understand what I'm talking about, you can easily like Google Dr. Emoto uh, and look at you know, all the documentaries and all the studies that have been published uh, before. And now that's gone even further into other fields of science, but water has an impression. Water can be imprint imprinted with information. Now, a lot of people are like, what is it? It's clear. It's a, it's a liquid. What do you mean by that? So go back and do the research because you'll see how impressive that we understand that water does have memory and it carries either good things and it's from its environment or it carries bad things. And unfortunately, right now, water has an abused journey, right? The especially the ocean right now, especially most of the, the natural uh, parts of water has this terrible abuse journey because it's tons of toxins, it's tons of waste. And the, it continues even when it comes through the municipal, how it even gets this through various pipes, through various environmental aspects, to even to get your home to your sink is also this continued abusive journey. But it's actually imprinting information into the water. Now, 
this long abused journey then is depleted of what we call the life force of energy, right? So a lot of us can like drink water and still feel not hydrated. Right. So a lot of us like maybe a lot of people might say, hey, you know what, Dr. Pye, I'm moving towards a plant based diet or I'm already plant based or I'm an athlete or, uh, you know, I, 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 I'm a performer. Or I, I work every day and I carry my bottle of water and I drink it. And, you know, I drink it, but I just don't feel hydrated. I still feel tired. I still feel dehydrated, even though I'm drinking the amount of ounces that they recommend me to do. And we have to understand that there's a life force that has been removed from the, the water itself. Now, the first problem with water in the United States and worldwide that is contaminated hundreds of chemicals, fertilizers, pesticides, prescription drugs, forever chemicals, you know, PUFAs and PUFOs, right? Now you can go to Environmental Working Group, like I mentioned it yesterday, but you go to Environmental Working Group, EWG, and then you type in water database on the search engine and you put in your zip code and you will see that they've independently tested the municipalities in your city. And you will see also how many contaminants there is. And you'll be surprised because most people think, well, gosh, you know, isn't the isn't my municipality filtering the water? Yeah, they're filtering the water. It doesn't have bacteria. It doesn't have E. coli. You're not going to get you know dysentery or or you know you know some salmonella from the water, but they're not taking out all the chemicals. So all the things that we put in fertilizers and the people are spraying in their lawns that rains goes back down into the drain and all the prescription medications that we take and they throw down the in, in the toilet or we actually excrete and urinate it out. You know, my book actually has a chapter and, and in one of the chapters, it talks about it will list the studies of you know which cities in the United States have the highest amount of which prescription drugs based on the population. Right. So Seattle, for example, has the highest amount of antidepressants, you know. That's why they created grunge and coffee, you know, saying so, because it's cloudy. People had more depression in places that the sun is not always shining. You know, Las Vegas, as I mentioned before, highest amount of hormones in the water. Okay, that's a no brainer. Um, New York has the highest amount of Xanax, which is an anti anxiety medication, right? So the, the more people take this, the more actually they excrete out, the more it actually comes back in the water. And unfortunately, everywhere in America, forever chemicals, right? And we notice, notice that, that that is coming out everywhere, uh, becoming a more and more of a problem. So we do need to do something called water purification, which is municipal, right? You, the water's going to come in and they got to purify it, and then it's going to eventually go to your home. But then still doesn't have, they're still not removing all the chemicals that you need, right? So when you go there, you're going to see, like, so like ours here in Albuquerque, it's filtered and everything like that comes from municipal. We have 585 times more arsenic in our water. El Paso has 2,500 more times more arsenic in the water. We have uranium and uh, 3.8 times more uranium. And unless you're working in a nuclear lab or Homer Simpson, I tell my patients, you shouldn't be exposed to uranium, right? But every place in America has now exposures. And we have to look at then what is coming in as part of an inflammatory, as part of a, uh, you know, a, a cancer promoter, as a, a part of something that's immunosuppressive, neurodegenerative. We have to look at what are the other things that we're doing aside of shifting to a plant-based diet, aside of you know, testing food allergies, aside of looking at nutritional levels, what you do, aside of looking at your microbiome, we have to look at the things that are kind of like on our plate every day or under our nose, which is the beverages that we're drinking all the time. And sometimes, you know, even when people do what we call purification now, which is important, right? Reverse osmosis or gravity filters, which most people now, if they can afford it, it's important because you really want to, you know, get rid of everything. You just don't want to say like, oh, I'm having a carbon filter. And when you look at this environmental working group, you'll see that on the bottom of the pages, it will show you what a carbon filter will do. Those are the filters that most people have in the refrigerator or the little pipe in the back of the refrigerator. Or, for example, not naming any brands, but like, for example, a Brita-like thing or a Pure-like thing. Those are carbon filters. And you'll see that carbon filter will remove certain things, but it won't remove certain things. So you have to, each person, each patient that we work with, we actually analyze and look at, well, what's in your water and what's in your city? Because sometimes you might have something that works perfectly well and it removes all your toxins. Fantastic. And sometimes people, which is most they will have some kind of carbon filtration. And guess what? They're still, it's still not removing things. And then when we test them, they have high toxins of those things that are not being pulled through their filter. So when someone comes back high with, say, uranium or arsenic or, or tungsten or platinum or anything like that, we have to say, well, is our filter removing it? And if it's not, then it's really important because these are things that we're drinking, you know, 
half your weight in ounces per se a day on the general recommendations up to a certain weight. And those things over time could potentially cause problems. And even on the environmental working group site, it will tell you about each chemical, what the potential danger, potential cancer, potential you know, chronic problem that that can be causing for us. But once we do this, once we clean the water, which we must, it's the first important thing for everybody is drink clean water, right? But then where's the life force energy? So it's a, it's a double-edged sword. We need to filter it. We definitely need to do reverse osmosis or gravity filter of some kind. We need that water to be devoid of chemicals, right? But the problem is the prana, the, or some people would call it the chi, the life force is no longer there. So what I want to talk about in the remaining part of the lecture is what we call jiva water devices or wellness technologies. It's actually something, using something called quantum electrodynamics. Okay. Uh, you can go to jivawater.com backslash rock doc to start learning more about this technology. But what they are, it's really simple. It's scientifically proven water structuring devices that does three things importantly. Number one, it removes trauma from the water. It's bad memory. It's kind of the, the misinformation that's been presented to the water. It actually increases the energetic levels of the water and it returns the water to its most natural nourishing state. And there's different devices sizes based on the amount of flow and use that is needed. Now, the nice thing is that there's no batteries. It's not a filtering device. So this is not going to filter out the chemicals. It's not going to filter out the heavy metals. It's not going to filter out the pesticides. Those are things that, again, reverse osmosis or gravity filters are doing. This is after you've done that. We're now in the next stage called nutrification. That's the next step after purification. You have to purify your water. People need clean drinking water, number one. So don't get me wrong. But after you purify our water, then we were, we're doing something called naturefication. We're trying to now improve and enhance, which we now can do using the Jiva water devices. So there's a three-stage process. It's proprietary. And I won't go into too much detail, but it will take the water. It will transform it. It will erase the trauma from it. It will then enhance the energetic force of the water, and then it will make the water structured, which is more energetic, okay? Now, for those who don't understand what I'm talking about, again, go to jivawater.com backslash rock doc, and there's a video there on nutrification, so you actually can see what I'm talking about and these three stages of how that occurs with the device. No filter, no battery, no replacement. So you set it, and you forget it. That's what I like about this kind of technology because it's something that it's not that I have to keep changing or I have to replace or somebody's got to keep you know, giving me something. It's like, no, you put it in, it's going to do what it does, and you're done. Now, as those size devices, we have four of them. And these are actually names of uh, important rivers in India. So this is just where, where, where the technology. In my book, I do mention briefly, you know, structured water. And some of the scientists that I've been working with, Dr. Krishna Manapa, for the last uh, 10, 15 years that I've known him, uh, in the last six years, they've been taking these technologies. Then they went to further to do studies. They've patented the process of how they actually manufacture and produce these things. And now they've done hundreds of studies now in India, which is, this is why we now use it over there. And now we're coming and bringing it here to the United States. We have a handheld called Yami, and that's what I use. So after I filter, we have a reverse osmosis in our home. Uh, we also have a gravity filter in our office. Um, and so once it comes out of the, the either or that's already purified, then we just run it through the handheld Yami, and then it also does all the nutrification and, and structuring to the water. This actually is a photo of uh, the, the Vipassa that I have in my house. It's a little bit of a large device, and it's a two-inch opening. And this is what most people will put in their home or their office building. Um, so the water after, you know, again, we have a home house filter to take out all the iron. We have high iron where I live and, you know, and, and take out the chlorine and some of these other, uh, other chemicals and prescription drugs after, before it goes into the rest of my house and to, before it goes into the rest of my shower or my laundry and all the stuff like that, we actually have it go through this device. And more importantly, where the cool aspect is for those people who are like, you know what, uh, you know, I'm good. I have a filtration in my, in my house, but I love plant-based foods. I love agriculture. I grow my garden. I grow my vegetables and all. We'll show you in a minute. This is where the, the action is because in India, why we're doing so much studies in India, because right now, as you all know, with climate change that's happening, there is a worldwide problem with water and drought. We can't use more chemicals. We don't want to be using more chemicals, and but we need higher increasing of yield 
of what we do grow with the limited amount of water. And in India, since we have so many farms and these things that are major problems, it's easier for us to implement studies showing one side of a farm using a, a water going through a Jiva device and one side of the other farm, same, same farmer too, by the way, uh, showing uh, no Jiva water device and seeing the differences. Now for people and their pets, you know, boosting hydration, boosting immunity, uh, enhances blood oxygen levels, which we now we actually able to show um, uh, helps with detoxification, right? And actually, you know, you get that hydrated feeling, which is interesting. Like you drink it, you feel you feel hydrated. It's, it's a weird concept, but a lot of people like they're drinking stagnant water. And after a period of time, people feel like, you know, I'm less fatigued. I'm less tired. It's not drinking more water. It's just drinking the water that now has been enhanced. Okay, so these are the options for you that will benefit you and also the pets. So, you know, even our dog, Princess Winnie, as most of you know, or have seen on our website or have come visit us in our in our in our clinic, who's, you know, who lives with us now for 12 years, comes to work every day, loyally, faithfully seeing our patients. She gets Jiva water as well. So it's, it's very interesting because you can just run everything through the, the device. Again, no filter, no batteries, no replacement. It's stainless steel. Fantastic. Now, the benefits for farming. So so again, if people are like, well, you know what? I want to see something. I feel something, obviously, but I want to see something. Why grow my vegetables? We're talking about plant-based nutrition. You know, you just had a couple of doctors talking about raw foods and growing foods and having sprouts and stuff. So now the cool thing is because that's the thing that people will see, right? People want to see something, you know, just like when we do PMA, it sometimes may take some time to get cellular activation to occur so that people notice that, oh my God, I am having less inflammation. I have more, uh, more energy. I sleep better. I have, you know, my, my neuropathy takes a little while to improve, but it does improve. But when you see things like from farming, it's very cut and dry. You can easily see this side, this plant, not this plant, and it's easy to see. But what we see is that improves plant immunity. So we can see now with plants that are treated with Jiva water, they have less disease. And in India, we have a lot of problems. Again, that's why they use a lot of chemicals because of disease, right? There's a lot of these kind of plant diseases that go around in nature. And also with the drought, we can see better moisture retention in the soil that actually the Jiva water is used. The water, actually the soil retention is higher. It actually stays moist for a longer period of time, stimulates root development. There's less chemicals that we need. It revives the natural soil biome. And what we want to do in the future, which is something that is going to be one of my personal studies, is that since we do microbiome studies in patients, we want to start seeing in patients that are using Jiva water, how that also affects our own microbiome in addition to just the soil microbiome that we can test. Now, faster growth cycles we see more importantly, increasing yield. And what my favorite thing is, aside of increasing yield, which is a production aspect, is also higher nutrific or nutri nutrition values. Now, we know life force, right? We all understand it. We, we taste foods. That's what we're trying to tell people to eat more whole plant foods, right? Whole food, plant-based diet, for example. And we do know that eating sprouts and eating greens and eating live foods has a higher energetic value. We can actually study these things. We can actually measure the photons, the energetic, you know, uh, you know, kind of um, expansiveness that's occurring from different technologies. And you know, here's an animal protein here and here's plant foods, right? So that's why, you know, people feel better. That's why it's an anti-inflammatory diet. That's why fresh live foods. And we now know that when we process it, a little bit damaging, we still need to heat foods. We're not talking about just eating raw. We're talking about we did invent fire for a reason, but getting the whole foods in general, you still have this higher life force energy. But when we overcook things like microwaving it or high industrial processing, ultra processed foods, it's even worse. There's no life force or energy. So simply, they've done studies, and I've only picked a few here. And when you go to uh, sangevini.net and sign up, we will do multiple webinars in the future with the scientists, with the farmers, and we'll talk to them as well. And we'll talk to everybody involved in these projects because we really want to show that these are things that we can help with improving not only our food, our food production, but our overall environmental sustainability. When we looked at here with hydroponic spinach, okay, Produced the same, you know, as you can see, they're all hydroponic. So some, some sunsets, again, same amount of roots, same amount of seeds. They water it the same. So it's all calculated, by the way. It's all kind of systematized uh, me mechanically. You know, the, the spinach, you know, gave a certain amount of weight, you know, per, per crop of, of, of growth. And then when they changed it just to using the Jiva water on the other side, we see that there's a higher yield, 42% increase in weight, right? So we can actually grow more. From the, from the same amount of water that we did before, which is important for us, right? Going forward with climate change issues.
Now, even my favorite, which I talked about yesterday, right? We talked about bostmeric. We talked about you know the the differences between turmeric and curcumin, right? Curcumin being a portion of the turmeric. But when they do this for crops, now I, I don't have a good picture in, on the webinar. I'll be showing you actually the length of it. But the size of the turmeric rhizome is not only bigger than the the regular ones, but more importantly, the nutritional value. And actually, and this has all been scientifically and independently tested, that it actually has with the Jiva water enhanced the nutrition inside, higher percent of curcuminoids, right? That's what we're talking about when we're talking about bosomeric, like how to remember it's like curcumin is about uh, three to 5% of turmeric, right? So, and we have to extract those out to make the three curcuminoids in bosomeric, right? The C3, for example, complex. And the idea is that now we can incorporate these in farming and actually have a higher yield so that we can actually get better, higher potency products. But here, for most people, just eating the turmeric now has a stronger anti-inflammatory health benefit, right? We're trying to enhance the nutrition value because soil has been depleted and the water has been damaged. And so we're now we're looking back, can we make food medicine? And now we're trying to make it even more effective. These are just a few photos, but you can see here, again, these are these are beef, you know, with normal water. And this is with the Jiva water with certain plants and the flower production is better. And even the rice paddy fields, you know, we use so much rice in India and Asia, you know, as a daily staple, sometimes three times a day in the person's diet. And so it's important because when we're having this drought problem and water problem, we can actually improve yield feed, feeding millions of people. The soil, as I mentioned before, the soil retention is more moist. It stays moist longer. And then even like another crop here, chili, which is one of our favorites. If you listen to my healing spices, Again, on YouTube, that's another thing that I've been doing. You know, we talked about chili and caps capsaicin and the capsaicinoids, that the chili pods and the chili uh, plant itself is actually higher, but the amount of capsaicin content, just like the curcumin content in the uh, turmeric rhizome um, was increased. We can see even the life force of the like sugar cane got better. And even the tomatoes got better. We have hundreds of different vegetables and fruits and, and other fruits and vegetables that we don't even have here in America. I just picked the ones that some people would kind of recognize. But this is what we want to start using now, in addition to all the things, is talking about how to increase our health and wellness using advanced wellness technologies. For those information want to go further at all, go to centripics.us backslash rockdoc. Or on the water enhancement devices, you can go to jivawater.com backslash rock doc itself for both information on videos and all. And for those people who actually uh, purchase or even get any of these products, we're able to help with further guidance on use and other tips that people might be able to use. If you're a patient or a client of ours, uh, we can give some other types of advice on synergies, on enhancements of those things, and other things that we've been seeing in our practice now for many years on how we can incorporate these things and further get uh, um, mutual benefits on a variety of levels. I do want to end with a um, quote from Paramahansa Yogananda is that when modern science will discover how to go deep into the subtle electromagnetic constitution of man, it will be able to correct most of the medical conditions in the ways that would seem almost miraculous today. So this is what we've been talking about. Like what did Einstein and Tesla talk about? Frequencies and vibration and energy. This is important. We get this from food. We get this from being on the planet Earth. We get this from being in the garden. And now we're looking at how we can use technologies now that we live in a modern world and a modern society. How do we get those things now that we can kind of create that from a, from a, a device or a wellness technology to help enhance our healing. You can contact me here at sanjevity.net. We do consultations to people worldwide via telemedicine and, and, and health coaching worldwide. We also have a store. You can get Boss American, look at all our wonderful products. And then for, again, the wellness technology, centropics.us backslash rockdoc and jivawater.com backslash rockdoc. Thank you very much for taking your time this morning and listening to this presentation on wellness technologies. I look forward to speaking to many of you uh, on the Q&A. Thank you very much for that informative presentation, doctor. Um, so we're now gonna begin the live Q and A. Uh, I'll be asking some questions as well as opening up to the audience. But before we begin, we'd like to make sure that everyone knows how to connect with you. You showed some of the stuff. Uh, where would they also find your books? So my book is uh, on uh, San, uh, Sanjevni store. Dot com. You can actually order it there and get a signed copy. I'm, I'm happy to sign the books and send it out to you. Also, um, you can get it on Amazon if you 
like to purchase things on Amazon, I prefer people to buy it from me, then I can sign it. And then, you know, we're bypassing Mr. Bezos, but either way, also it's on Audible. So those people who like to listen to uh, Audible books, it's professionally read, it's about 14 hours. So it's a, it's a big book. So it's about 450 pages with a thousand references, evidence-based information on the 10 definitive steps, how to prevent, reverse, and treat disease through diet, lifestyle, and the use of natural anti-inflammatories. And so, yeah, you can get it on our, our store, sangevinystore.com, uh, Amazon, or Audible. Thanks for sharing that. We'll now begin our Q&A session. We'll be asking questions of you, doctor. Um, our, we're also going to open it up to our audience. Uh, we first just want to explain to everyone how this works. We don't take questions directly from the chat. Instead, we ask everyone to virtually raise their hand if you're not sure how to do this. What you need to do is click on the reactions button, second from the right at the bottom of your Zoom window, then click on the raise hand function in the menu that pops up. We will take questions in the order in which they were received. When it's your turn, I will unmute you, prompt you to state your name, where you're from, and ask your question. We ask that everyone keep their questions brief and on topic. We will then mute you. In order to give everyone a chance to get their question answered, we won't take follow-up questions. However, if there is time, you can just raise your hand again, and if we can get to you, then we can we can do it that way. So um, let's see here. We have a question here from Ben. Ben, please state your name, where you're from, and state your question. Um, my my first name, my being well, I'm from the Maryland in America here. So um, my question is, um, I know water is so important. The human body is made by water. Seventy percent is water. But uh, how do you uh, how do you um, do you have any evidence that your water is works for the patient to decrease the infl inflammation? Uh, do, do you have data? Um, you know, so so on, on, on a clinical trial or a study, absolutely not right now at this time, but we do have uh, uh, hundreds and uh, hundreds of testimonials from patients and customers who have used the device. It is one thing, you know, we want to look at is that, you know, you can always try something and see it for yourself, you know, like be a scientist. I'm a scientist myself. So I use all the things, anything that I mentioned in my book, anything that I mentioned as a lifestyle recommendation to my, my clients, I use myself. Now, some things like water enhancement, uh, some people are like, well, how does that work? Right. So same thing with the PMA, like some people are like, well, you know, where's the studies? Now, some things we have more studies on. And so that's why it's easier to do, say, uh, agriculture studies or, or studies on, on or getting a testimonial. But we are moving into the level of, you know, what I want to look at is even microbiome, as I mentioned before, microbiome changes, because, you know, the water is everything. And we now know that, you know, dead water, you know, most people like, if you ever been to Costa Rica, I was recently in Costa Rica a couple of years ago, and the ionization of the water just coming in a rainforest, that high density of life force. That's why like there was more nutrient, uh, animal density, more plant density in the places where the, actually the water is actually the highest. So we're trying to look at technologies that can actually mimic that and produce that because we don't live in a natural environment. You live in Maryland. I live in Albuquerque, right? It is what it is. But it is something that I would, I would, I would implore you to say, well, why don't you try it yourself? See what you feel, see what you notice, and then see what you notice on your family, your friends, or your customers, or clients, or your patients. Okay. Thank you for that answer, doctor. Um, are you are you working toward getting those uh, those clinical trials done? For I'm working on trying to get more studies on human patients because, you know, what happens right now in, in India, they're looking at first from an agricultural standpoint because that's the fast and furthest thing that we can do in terms of helping mass people, right? If we can produce more food with less chemicals, that's the goal right now. Can we get more people eating more plant-based, right? Even I didn't talk to this about in my lecture because there's lots of data on animals, okay? Now, I'm a plant-based person, so I didn't want to show the, the, the animal stuff, but when they use it for farming, for example, there is improvement in the health of the cows, the chicken, and the pigs. It, it improves like even less di uh, diseases that those animals have been shown to have, less antibiotics, less. So that everybody's trying to move towards you know even cleaner uh, cleaning animal industries, right? In India, we they use a lot of dairy, for example. They use a lot of the manure also for farming as well. So can we improve that? So they have a lot of data on that in terms of the wellness of the animal itself has improved, right? Uh, even the smell, for example, of the farm goes down. 
So there's a lot of things in terms of like what we're going to do a project here, hopefully in our state soon might be a project with the zoo. And if we can get that done, then we can actually show on a larger scale. Like these are animals that we all are putting in enclosed containers uh, and, and facilities. We need to make it like they are nature. Otherwise, that's why they have higher rates of diseases. And now we know, at least in India, in the farms, that that's what they're using it for. So it's decreasing the amount of disease, improving the animal's health. Now, can I do that on human patients? It's not as easy, right? It's easy to do it on a farm because you have thousands of animals. You can put something here. We'd have to do it individually in some people's homes, but we would want to move towards where we have, you know, data on like, here's 20 people before and after, or here's 20 people that don't have the device with the same similar, you know, matching conditions, but there's a time and an effort for that. Right now it's easier to do it in the animal world than the agricultural world. And if someone's using this water device, how quickly would they expect to see results? And what would be the initial results that they would say? So, you know, for most people, again, it's, it's like anything else. It takes a little bit of time. I, I give it a, I give it at least a week to start people start noticing other benefits, you know, because your body doesn't just change overnight, right? So even if you eat plant-based, whole food plant-based, take Boschmeric, you know, it's still a change, right? There's a cellular activation of change. And you know, even your hemoglobin A1C is a three-month life cycle of a red blood cell. Right. So I always tell people, you know, give it three months because that's when everything starts to change because we're changing, you know, your cells are always dividing. Everybody wants on and off shows. The problem with America right now is instant gratification. Everybody wants, nobody wants to put an effort, right? They just want to turn it on. And that's where the PMEA device, right? The cloud is kind of helpful because you're kind of turning on for 15 minutes. It's lasting for 12 hours. You're getting that benefit. But when it comes to diet and other things, even just regular hydration, it still takes some time, right? The people to get there, but you'll notice those other benefits. What I always tell people is like, just do before and after. Here's your blood pressures before. Here's your other studies before, you know, use the device and then measure it off. We've only heard positive things. I've only seen positive things, only experienced positive things. But as a scientist, I, I have to say, well, I don't have a double blinded randomized control trial on this. We're like on the Boston America or other things like I talked about yesterday as in nutraceuticals. We have that, right? But it takes time. Like it's taken 20 years to get to double blinded randomized control trials on nutraceuticals. And now we're talking about a brand new field of science, but it will happen. You know, even with the cloud PMEA, just letting you know that there's a largest study being done now it's on thousands of patients. So every time somebody acquires these, they actually can be enrolled into a study and they're actually now defining it and, and monitoring and measuring outcomes. So it's not just like, here's a, here's a technology or device. We're like, participate so that we can absolutely gather. I, I think it's at the Sigmund Freud Institute in Europe where they're actually going to, so like they have thousands of people. So probably in the next three years, we're going to have, you know, tens of thousands of patients. And now we can say like, what are their symptoms that they're, they're responding to and what is it responding to best? And, uh, and what are the, what, what are the things that are working and not working? Uh, that's great. That's great. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're, our next audience member is David and David, please state your name, where you're from and ask your question. Yes. My name is David. I'm from the Washington DC area. Uh, thank you, Dr. Pai. I was curious, before you um, went with Cocoon, did you ever consider other technologies like the Wave, Raid, wave Rider or Wave Guard? And, and secondly, any thoughts about hydrogen water? Uh, so I'm not familiar with those two devices, so I can't comment on that. But I will, uh, I will. And if you put it in the chat, I'll write it down. I'll look at it, okay? Because I'm always looking at everything, by the way. So I'm not just like, oh, uh, one thing. And we use multiple things in our practices, and even things on heart rate variability. I didn't bring up today. There's other technologies that we actually do, like practicing and measuring biofeedback um, on hydrogen water. I'm not, you know, I, I'm the guy that is trying to be keeping the, the water more into this natural state. I actually tried hydrogen water for a while. I got one of those devices. Is, you know, this is like a couple of years ago prior to the pandemic, just because one of the things to test is it wasn't expensive and you can hydrogen water. I really didn't notice much of a difference. But one of the things that we want to go back to just from a scientific perspective is that that we are not adding anything to the water except for enhancing its structure and its energetic quality, right? What we don't want to do is actually change water from its natural state because that's how not what nature is intended to. So a lot of times you'll see also like people not only adding hydrogen, they're also trying to look at, at increasing pH, for example. And we don't recommend P high pH water for anybody. Uh, the high pH water actually will affect the microbiome. So even though some people will have like heartburn or reflux inflammation in their stomach, so they're making it more alkaline to make them feel a little bit better just here, then they think it's a systemic thing. Or for example, since we know we're supposed to be eating an alkaline diet, plant-based, for example, right? It, rather than animal protein, which is pro-inflammatory and acidic diet, then they say, well, if I drink alkaline water, maybe it makes my whole body alkaline. That's not true. It actually will uh, affect the microbiome negatively. And we have tons of patients where we can demonstrate this because a lot of people will buy, for example, alkaline water 
at the store. You go to the store, there's hundreds of companies that are doing that super high pH water. And, um, you know, we can have a before they, they bought the device, a microbiome test. And then later on, like six months later, a year, oh, I went and bought someone, someone sold me something, or I saw something at a demonstration or a, a conference or something, and they've tried it and it's negatively affected that because that the changing the pH of your stomach, your pH of the stomach is one to two. You want to keep it at one to two. That's, that's how the microbiome is set to fix at keeping overall uh, dysbiosis and, and overgrowths um, uh, imbalanced. And we see that people who use high pH water will actually do that. Hydrogen water, I don't have as much data on per se, but I'm, I'm someone that I, I didn't know personally any, any true benefits. And I tried it for several, several months because it's like, it was no, it's easy to do. Um, but I haven't really seen that kind of data. And also from nature, it's not really coming on that higher level of adding that extra. So I, I was kind of like, I was trying to preserve things, but enhance it to be where it's in its most natural state. Okay. So if you're not a big fan of uh, alkaline water or hydrogenated water, um, what now? Well, it's not that I'm a big fan. The data will also show that we shouldn't be doing it. That's just a marketing oh, okay. that everybody, I'd want to be like, oh yeah, I'm not a fan of it. It's like, if you understand the physiology data. or immunology or how your microbiome works, then it's like, no, we, we, we weren't designed to be drinking pH of eight, nine, 10 water, uh, even though there's devices and machines and, and filters that will do that. Filtering the water is the most important thing. So definitely, you know, I always tell people you have to, like, like I said, look at EWG, look at the water database, get, make sure you get a filter that, you know, and not, not everybody needs a, this a reverse osmosis or gravity. Like sometimes the carbon filter will do fine, but you have to make sure that you are clearing it out. But once you clear it out and you really want to go further, you're never going to be disappointed. What does the research show on reverse osmosis versus gravity water filters? So the so it's not the research of the benefit, like is one better than the other. The, the challenge is now the following is convenience. So reverse osmosis, you know, it goes under usually the sink. And now uh, the problem with reverse osmosis moving forward in the future is that um, there's a waste of water with, with reverse osmosis. So, you know, as the water goes through these filters, which are fantastic, and then it goes through the membrane and stores into a tank, there's usually a, a loss ratio. And that's where the, 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 the reverse osmosis now is kind of being shied down upon. Because for every gallon of water that is purified, then there's a certain amount of gallons that is lost. A one to three, one to four, or one to five, depending on the brand. Okay. Now, it, for the last 20, 30 years, nobody cared. Water wasn't a big deal. And you don't see it because it, it goes through the sink. You know, and so you're pouring, you're getting the filtered water from the little nozzle in the sink, and it's all filtering the body, but you're not seeing the water that's being wasted down the sink that is going out through the membrane. Or people go to the store. Hey, I go to the store, and they're buying every, you know, they get the, the little blue jugs, and they go to the, the health store, the grocery store, and they have that water store franchise things, you know. People are spending 39 cents, 49 cents a gallon of filtered water, which is crazy. When you get a reverse osmosis or a gravity filter, it's about two to three cents per gallon when you actually, uh, you know, kind of figure out the costing of it. And so anybody who's going to the store and paying for water, it's a huge ripoff. That's why stores and franchises are selling it because you're paying more money than gas, which is also expensive uh, for water, right? But the challenge is saving water. So now they have what they call re uh, reverse osmosis that are tankless which have a lower ratio, but you're still losing like, a, you know, one to two gallons. So for every one gallon you, you, you filter, usually two gallons are wasted. Now, why that is still popular? Because it's easy. Plug it in, instant gratification. You turn it on, water's coming out of the filter. Fantastic. When people use gravity filters, for example, like a Berkey, and there's other brands, but just like that, is that's gravity. So you have to put it in, it will filter out everything. Filters out, you know, sometimes even more chemicals sometimes. Uh, and, you know, they have an extensive list of taking out the PUFAs and the, and the, and the, some of the you know, prescription drugs and everything else like that. The problem is there's a wait time, right? So you have to fill the tank and then you got to let it gravity, you know, gravity and pull it out. Now, if you're not in a rush, then you do that. So like my house, I, I bought a house that came with reverse osmosis. So it's there. So I use that. But in our office, since we have more time, we use a gravity filter. Why? Because I'm trying to save water a little bit as I go, you know, over time. And we're all trying to be more sustainable. It's not like rip out everything and change it. But when you can, it's like, yeah. So some people are like, hey, it's just one or two people in the home and they don't mind, you know, reaching over and pouring the water in, in, in the tank and letting it gravity filter. That's fine. For like my parents who are a little bit older, that might be a little bit of a chore putting the water and, fill, you know, changing it out. It might be easier getting a tankless one and kind of going that way. Either way, though. I always look at try to be sustainable when you can, but more importantly, filter out is super important because a lot of people, you know, if they can't buy organic, for example, as I mentioned yesterday, like how to look at environmental working group, like the dirty dozen and stuff like that, how to eat more organic, what, what you really should eat more organic, organic, everything if possible, but these are the ones that you, you need to pay for organic, but clean water is, is even more important because that's something that you're drinking, consuming 
larger amounts all the time that has other chemicals that are that are just as uh, just as bad and high in concentration. Okay, and you spoke a little bit about the carbon filters. How I, I know, so, so, yeah. So carbon filters are going to be like a Brita, a Pure. Most people who buy a refrigerator say in the last. 10 years there's that little you know you know little filter that goes in the in, in the inside or there's a little pipe that goes on the outside that people buy carbon filters so carbon filters are great they they remove a lot of things but when you go to the environmental working group water database you'll see that in each city in each state it, you know i only had one patient this year uh that had a, lived in a city that their carbon filter took out everything that they should. And I was like, congratulations, you don't have to do anything here. Just make sure you change your filter. But now there's so many chemicals that it doesn't. So yeah, does it, is it going to take out like lead and mercury? Yeah, cadmium, yes. But with all these other chemicals, and now that we actually can test for those chemicals in the patient right now, right? Without a challenge, it just it's a urine test now. So we're not doing any kind of chelating, you know, pretest. We're just like, are you getting exposure? If you're testing positive for something and you do your water you know, evaluation and if you're still high in that, that means it's coming directly from that water source. And so improving that water technology instead of filtration is key for their longevity because these are, in, you know, people can be like, oh, I'm plant-based and exercise, I'm, I'm doing yoga, I pay my taxes, go to church, all this stuff. And then, you know, why do I have this problem? It's like, because you're just drinking, you know, 60, 80 ounces of water a day that has 20, 30 chemicals, which are all potential cancer carcinogens and all listed on that site. So carbon filters are good. And I think, you know, carbon filters, you know, 20 years ago was all we needed, but now there's just more and more and more chemicals in our environment. So it's key to to make sure that you are getting clean water. And the, the challenge with the carbon filter is that everybody thinks that that clears everything because they think that that's the only problem. So it's just lead or mercury. Like we, we talk about five or six things, cadmium and all these things like that. And then now they look at, well, gosh, this is our water report. Now, the municipal water report will be give a report and they'll say the water is clean. That's different what the environmental working group will do. Environmental working group, they will look at all these other chemicals because your, your water shouldn't have the normal bacteria. So every water report from every municipal is going to be clean. They'll say, yeah, you don't have E. coli. Great. You're not going to get diarrhea illness from drinking out of the tap. But we're looking at removing all the other chemicals that are being in, uh, that are in the municipal water. That's just because we live in the, the world today. Okay. Thank you very much. I'm going to open up our next question to Dimple. Dimple, please state your name, where you're from, and ask your question. Hello, um, my name is Dimple. Um, I'm from the UK, Birmingham. Um, and I wanted to know um, what's the best sort of water to drink apart from Jiva, because I don't think it's that widely available in the UK. Um, we normally collect our water from Malvern Hills, which is like a stream, like a, a mountainous kind of hill um, where natural water is collected, like we collect it every six weeks or so. And so we tend to boil that and drink that on a daily basis because the state's got so many minerals and stuff in it. So, um, but I try to stay away from tap water um, and try to drink like spring water from Kirkland and Costco's as well, which is not the best because it's um, it's plastic bottles. So what would you suggest? Um, so it's a great, uh, nice story. And nice meeting you, Dimple. Um, Thank you. Uh, Great that you have actually some natural source. So that's kind of like, wow, you live in a pretty cool place or near a cool place because you're getting actually some natural source. The key with the natural sources, and I don't know much about the UK in terms of its its environmental issues, but but I'll give you an example here in the United States. A study just came out a month ago, a month and a half ago, looking at the natural springs and rivers that are, you know, in the mountains. Like here in New Mexico, we have these wonderful yeah. mountains. And on the weekends, a lot of people go uh, fishing, for example, right? They, they go, you know, this just like natural things. Now I'm plant-based, so, but you know, that's just the thing that people do. And I understand that. I expect, I respect that. But, you know, they, they found out even freshwater fish and even river fish here in, in, and they checked like, you know, all these different rivers and springs all across America, even in our, in my city, right? And it found like even the fish had high toxicity of plastics and PUFAs. Right. So, mm -hmm. so we're like, how is this happening? Because it's like in the because it shows you like how much of like, unfortunately, industrial exposure of things that we're just sure. getting in the environment. Now, what I would do is if you're getting a spring like that, I would just make sure that it is tested just for contaminants. Right. So there's water testing that you can get or you can take the water and take it to a local shop. There's like usually water stores and stuff like that that will that will just analyze it and just see whether you have it. It won't be perfect. But, you know, as you write, you're boiling it, which is important because you got to just make sure because it's fresh of bacteria and stuff like that that. Um, and um, that's great. 
keeping bottled water, I'm, a, I'm totally against bottled water because just due to the plastic issue, um, you know, the bottled water, we now know that the water has been leaching on you know, the plastic. So we get a lot of exposure for that. Heat makes that worse. So most of like here, I'm in the Southwest. So people go buy water, bottled water. It's been on those cases and things. It's on a truck. It's coming through Arizona. It's in, you know, here in New Mexico, it's like a hundred degrees in the, in the summertime. That plastic is leaching tons of plastic. And also we don't want people actually reusing the water bottles. A lot of patients come into my office who want to like, like kind of be conservative. They don't want to throw away, which is great. Like it's, these are throwaway bottles. So uh, the problem is those are single use bottles and single use bottles actually leach more. So when people refill the, the, the single use bottle to kind of not want to throw it away, you want to use it over and over, it leaches even more out. Now, so using glass or stainless steel, always important for just kind of storing or keeping water when you can. Now, life's not perfect, but that's what you want to do. Um, the other thing is um, the Jiva water device is shipped worldwide. So, you know, if you go, if you go to the website, you know, jivawater.com backslash rock doc, it ships from India. I think they can easily ship it to uh, England. And if you have any issues, just send me an email uh, to, uh, you know, wellness at sanjevany.net and that we can always contact uh, that. And you can also see, but um, I would definitely look at, you know, avoiding the tap water when you can or make sure that it is tested. But if you are drinking the, the spring or the mountain water, probably going to be less, is less toxic than most people's water. But it's always just good to check because where you live, you never know what's upstream. And so if it is good, even better. Congratulations. You're, you're closer to nature than most people. Uh, but I, you know, there's a simple ways to actually just have home tests or just go to certain places probably in the city and they can just test the water. If it's clean for most of the contaminants, then you're, you're, you're much good to go. Thank you, doctor. Our next question is coming from Joseph. Joseph, please state your name, where you're from and ask your question. Hi, I'm actually Joseph's wife, Tammy. Can you hear me? Yes, we can, Tammy. Okay. Um, I work in an MRI department and you were speaking about residents. And I didn't know, now that it's becoming more common that we're having more and more imaging done, um, patients are spending extended periods of time within an MRI unit. And up until, you know, it could be an hour and a half, two hours, sometimes three hours. And um, how does that affect the body? We don't have as much, you know, coming from a conservative medical standpoint, right? Nobody wants to breach that discussion, right? Because we use MRIs every day. And the MRI, you know, fortunately is the lesser of all the other uh, x-ray technologies, right? So from a safety perspective, right? In certain areas, right? So it's, it's, not, a, it's not a CT scan. It's not a, even a PET scan, which is much, much higher in terms of radiation disclosure. We need these things, by the way, because we need to diagnose, we need to look, we need to do surgeries, we need to look at tumors. And so, you know, we use all the time. MRIs, we used to always consider as it's the safest, easiest one. But as you're right, a lot of people are getting multiple, multiple MRIs. And I'm, I'm sure on probably some cellular level, there is some effect. Now, the good news is that it's only temporarily, right? Like they're in there for a period of time. Time, uh, probably less the better, but that's the technology that we still, you know, is still lesser than the other ones. And so I don't want to make people get concerned that like, oh, I won't get an MRI for my knee and my shoulder or this or that. Uh, however, I think over time, we're going to learn that, you know, maybe people who work in facilities like this, or maybe people who work near these facilities might have other issues that we don't even think about, even though we know that the beam is like inside the tube, for example, it's focused here. There's probably some after effect that we just not, you know, I have a lot of patients, for example, that work at Los Alamos and San Diego labs. Those are the two major national laboratories here. They do a lot of things with radiation, a lot of things that are like, you know, they'd have to kill me if I found out or if they told me what they did. But we now know a lot of those patients who work in with exposures, you know, over every decade, they've changed the amount of exposure to the the, the people that work in those facilities. So I have a lot of patients, you know, who are in their 70s and 80s who worked in these facilities who have cancer. And the government was even following these clients because what we thought was safe back then, then every 10 years we go, maybe we change the amount of the dosage of exposure, right? We didn't know. We don't know about it, a lot of things, right? And so I, I think it's something that we should be cautious of. I wouldn't say anybody not to, not to uh, get an MRI, but I, I do probably will know and I do will say that I will say that some people are sensitive and some people feel they don't feel comfortable, not just that it's an enclosed tube and it makes you kind of claustrophobic. And I don't like them just as much as anybody else because it freaks me out uh, when I was an MRI myself. But uh, it, it might be something that may be too many. Just like, you know, we know like with PET scans, there's a little bit more data. We know that when someone has, either, I, think it's, I think it's above six PET scans in a year, it can increase, I believe, the cancer growth or the cancer risk about six to eight percent. So there is a risk. 
right? It's small because hopefully no one's getting a PET scan that many times. But, you know, we have to look at this accumulative effect over time of all these things. And that would be my answer. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tammy. So how does PEMF differ from the, the smog that you were talking about? So remember, it's a pulse signal, right? So the, the challenge is that when people have EMF sensitivity, myself and other people, now not everybody will have it. So it's like not everybody, if you don't have it, you're still getting exposure. But those people who have the sensitivities, it's, it's a challenge. Because again, as I mentioned before, as we're going on, technology is getting stronger and stronger. And we need to use the technology. I'm a doctor. I got to use technology every day. You know, <laughs> and, and the average person has to use technology. And, and most people are on technology, doing their homework. Kids are doing, everybody's on Zoom. Everybody's on online learning. Everybody's doing this. So we need to use these things. However, um, when we look at like, say a computer, for example, and I'll just give you my personal story. Cause this is like, you know, I have, uh, I used to have these large iMacs, you know, where the, where the computer is a screen. Now they have them where they have like separated, but you know, they have these, have these computers where the computer would have the, the processor and the screen and I have an L shaped desk in my office. Okay. So I, I have the, this looking, I will look one direction. I'm sitting with the patient on the desk and I have the computer on the side of me. And I used to get like these headaches and I used to get ear pain. I used to get this heat on the, on the left side of my body, left side of my shoulder. And it was just like, I never knew what it was coming from. And I tried everything because I didn't know at this time, you know, when I was at that time, so I changed position. I'd, you know, rub sass, you know, like thinking, I was like, maybe I'm doing something structurally. Maybe I'm slouching or not sitting correctly, change my chair and all stuff. Um, and then I actually had a patient, this is many, many years ago, who was super EMF sensitive. And I didn't know anything about the time about EMF. I'm like, what are you talking about? You know? And, and I, you know, sometimes at the beginning, people think you're crazy or you're one of those like weird people. And they came in my office and like, I, you have to, and they, they wrote to me like, hey, um, you need to please turn off your computer and please turn off this thing. I, I don't mean to just be disruptive, but I can't sit there that long and, and you know, two hour consultation with all these stuff around you probably. And so I, you know, respectively, I did that. One of the things is I noticed, though, that, you know, because I, I just kept it off the rest of the day just because I had it off, that I noticed that there was less of this. And I was like, what's that all about? And then I forgot about it, turned on my computer next day, you know, issue. Then I had a person later on that came in and they're like, hey, doc, you know, uh, they started sharing their story. And it's like, well, you know, I'm not really sure what you're talking about. I think I have a, I have a problem. They brought about an EMF meter. You know, those are like those little meters that can actually measure signal. And they, they said, hey, you should get one and kind of just measure it around your computer. And, you know, where the signal was coming the highest is where that processor is and where I'm sitting right across is from that processor. And so what I ended up doing is just getting a little bit of copper, like a copper mesh, which blocks EMF. And I put a copper mesh and it looked kind of funny because it's on my computer screen, you know, there and voila, like, like almost 80%, 90% reduction of that, that kind of piercing kind of pain that it, you know, weirdness. Um, but there's other things that I can't like put mesh over, right? Like I have a, I cell phone that I carry with me, but I can't keep in my pocket. I can't, I can't, I, you know, I, I, a lot of people I have to talk to, I talk to people on uh, um, speakerphone. I have trouble with the uh, holding the, the hand, uh, you know, get, my hand gets hot. It gets achy. You know, people get headaches really easily. Um, so what I've done is I moved to like a Mac mini, have my screen and then I have it further away from me. And then I have it covered where that signal is. Cause I still need to use the technology. I'm still wearing a bubble, you know, like this. Is, so the idea is like, you know, some people are just like, you know, super sensitive. And I, and I, and I really wish I wasn't because then I wouldn't have to have all this X, you know, like this, I just put it like everybody else, just stack it in. You know, I put everything on airplane mode at nighttime, you know, and, and I know that in England and in, in some of the public school studies that they did, they were showing with the high amount of Wi-Fi in the schools that they had statistical significant correlation with the schools that had plug in because it's easy just to plug in routers, put computers and then have Wi-Fi, right? It's cheap. But you don't have to have wiring. And uh, those classes and those kids ended up having more ADHD behavioral problems, disruptive problems, learning problems. And so that after that study was published in those those areas, they all went back to having wired technology. We just plug it into the, the you know, the cable, Cat Five or whatever the cable is, and they, they, all those things went back down statistically significantly. So there's things that we you know we are we are getting exposure to, and um, these are the things that I would recommend is like using technology when you need to, and trying to assess for those people who are sensitive as we go further to have certain type of technologies that can be protective. Do you happen to know the name of that study? Uh, no, but that was, uh, there, I think there's actually a documentary that was done on that actually, because that was a big deal in the, in the public schools. Cause you know, as we moved to computer classrooms, I mean, now kids just go like 20, 30 kids in a room and then it's just like 20 computers and they're all 
well, I, you know, so it's not just me and my laptop as toy kids and they're hours and hours a day going to classroom to classroom. Uh, but they actually, there's a, do, there's a documentary or a couple of uh, things on there. And that's really significant because, you know, anything, you know, public school, you got, you got to learn, you got to be on the computer. But the thing is like those kids are around it. There's going to be a certain percentage. Not every kid's going to have a problem, but for those who are, what are we doing when they have a problem? Then they're medicated or they're giving a treatment or they're, or, you know, there's some other problem where it's like, well, just like go back to, we originally had it. We plugged it in the back of the computer to go to the internet. Um, so anywhere in my house, for example, we've kind of hardwired back uh, to get the, you know, the, the faster internet. So I'm trying to, you know, we have, a, um, you know, what do you call it? Fiber optic. Uh, but I'm trying to, you know, cut down because now most people have those extenders right throughout their house. It's just boosting signal. And so again, we still want the faster Wi-Fi. I'm not against technology, but sometimes technology is against us. And what does the research show about grounding in nature? A lot of people talk about going to the beach and wonderful. Yeah. Love it. You should do it. <laughs> um, that's the, that. So, so for example, when they did the studies and I, again, I'm going to have, if they go to sanjevni.net, sign up for our newsletter, uh, cause we'll have this, this, these discussions and we'll have webinars where we'll have the scientists, but when they're looking at the cocoon, for example, right. Uh, it's like working on the Schumann resonance. We're talking about the earth's frequency. And that's why when we talk about grounding, well, that's why everybody feels good going to a beach or particularly going to, you know, walking on earth, just re, you know, grass or going to a forest, you just feel better. Right. Just, that's why people love go camping. They don't really re realize it, but that's one of the issues that is happening. It's actually this grounding effect is getting. But the problem is we are all, you know, wearing sneakers. Then we have cement and everything is like in the cities. Like you're just, you know, there's Central Park and you're over here. And so there's a little bit of an issue of being away from it. And that's why people love it. Like I got to go for the weekend and just go hiking. And they don't realize that just being more in nature is important. So there is a truth to that 100 uh, percent. And that's why when we look at other cultures that are actually more earth grounded, they actually have less of these other kind of conditions or problems, even though some, they might have other issues in their environment is that they actually, you know, have a better aspect of lowering some of these overall inflammatory stress responses, those things. I think modernization is important, but also there's a double-edged sort of having all these technologies in modernization. And what, what is going on scientifically when someone walks out into nature? Why is putting your feet on the ground without wearing shoes? Because the frequency of the earth is there's, there's a magnetic field. Just like when you see the Borealis lights and stuff, there's a, there's a fields effect, right? That's going on. We have these gravitational fields. And so the key is to be as close to those fields. So there is devices out there that people have that are, you know, these, these resonance that kind of ground the patient or, or some of these patient uh, things are like grounding, just like a grounding mat to the, 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 the grounding socket, the prong in the wall to kind of ground people. So they're just passive. It's just like how we get your body to be more connected. So the data does show that it does have on certain tests. Now, how they're measuring it is questionable because we don't have all the studies to, you know, technology, but they can show that, you know, sometimes you know, we'll see inflammation going down and hydration of better. There's always these things, but, you know, physiologically, I'll say like, it's not harmful. Like getting people should be getting out in nature. Then that's the freest, cheapest thing to do. But the problem is most of the people who do live in a city, like you live in New York or you live in Los Angeles, man, you know, or you live in Las Vegas, like I don't mind going for a weekend. I don't think I could ever live or work there, right? Like that, that would be a really challenging environment for me, even though for other people, they may not have a problem. Great. Our next question is coming from David. David, please state your name, where you're from and, and ask your question. Yeah, it's David again from Washington, D.C. I was wondering if you have a name of a whole house filter system that you recommend and also regarding the uh, the bubble business, if I can't afford the cocoon, can I just use the bubble on me when I sleep? And will that be just as effective for just yeah. me as great. the whole cocoon system? Right. Great. Great question. Uh, so first, yeah, I always recommend people who are just sensitive in themselves from a cost standpoint to use the bubble. Now, the only thing about the bubble, since it isn't also an active right? So it's like, it's an active blocker, right? It does increase. Remember I showed you this slide. It does increase some people's energy, right? So some people are super sensitive. Um, like I don't sleep with it. I put it on the side of my bed um, because on certain days it actually can make me feel a little bit more up at night. Other patients though, sleep with it, have no problem, right? 
Um, I'm just a super light sleeper and I'm trying to always come. That's why I like do the relax signal on the, on the, I don't really use the, I already know it's like, you don't need to energize anymore, Dr. Pa. You need to be able to come, right? Cause I'm, just, I'm very animated. As you can see, this is what happens when you go plant-based. You have a lot of energy, the antioxidants, all the plant foods, right? That's why when you see a lot of the speakers who are plant-based, they're like very vibrant. They're very, why is because we just, we're, we're less inflamed, for example, right? Um, so yeah, you can use the bubble as that. And there was a second question that you had, I forget. Ooh, um. Sorry. Yeah, actually, I, I uh, actually let me see if I can get him back. Give me one second here. Uh, okay, so so just uh, the bubble, yeah, that can be used, and you can sleep with it. So I would sleep with it. But if you sleep with yes. it, and you notice that you're you know kind of I'm having difficulty sleeping, then I would just take it off. That might be too much stimulation. Again, probably most people wear it. I just have a tendency that I just take it off. David, the other question, the other question I had was, I was wondering if you could recommend or you a water filtration recommendation regarding right. the whole home house yeah. filter system, and then if you have quick time, what you think of the Beamer technology? Yeah, so on the whole house water filter system, so there's various brands out there. So I'm not going to be, you know, we use uh, an APEC water system just because of cost. Um, but the key for whole house water filtration filtration systems are is having your water tested, which most of these companies will do. You can go down to local water stores and they, you know, test it because, because whole house water filters can also vary, right? So what you want to do is make sure that you also might need to buy a filter that's specific to your problem, not just a general one, right? So like there's ones that take out everything that's fantastic. Uh, for example, in our house, in our area, we have high iron content due to the pipes and stuff in Albuquerque and, you know, so like that would actually kind of damage the regular great filters that they have. So I have to get one that's more specific to remove even that, even though it's doing everything else. Some people have other things. Some people also have like odor in the water, right? Because of other molecules of other minerals or uh, contaminants. So that's where I look at whole house water filters. Just don't buy one generic one. Although there's different brands out there, I would always look at first testing your water because you want to be like, if you're going to invest that money, because none of them are cheap, they're probably going to be a thousand up to $3,000, depending on the system, the size, and more importantly, how many people in the house and how many gallons you use per year, right? So like uh, we only have Marine and I and my dog, Winnie, uh, in our house. So when we buy these ones, and they're usually for, you know, four people in a home and average, you know, average family kind of thing, then ours is lasting almost like eight to 10 years before we have to change it versus some things you might have to change like three years if you had kids and multiple people. So that's what I would do on that. Now, going back to the, you talked about the Beamer technology. So Dr. Kafka is that signal that the, that that other system uses is Dr. Kafka signal, right? So that's that was the gold standard. That was what was licensed out and that was what was patented. And that's what everybody used. That's what we used. I'm, a, I'm in fact, the first physician to actually have it published in the US scientific literature, medical literature about the benefits of that signal for peripheral neuropathy because the data in Europe was very, very uh, good on the use of that, right? But now the interesting thing is as that was going on, he was still working and, and patenting. And then that, that's why this is like the next generation. We're now adding other benefits. But if you have the other one, you can still always use that. I mean, I'm not against it. I have both, <laughs> by the way. You know, It's just that anything now that I can give a further enhancement, like an energizing or relaxing uh, and app-driven and you know, easy to take and move it and all, it's just like that. Then those are the things just technology-wise and for user-friendly-wise, it's just a further advancement of tech. Just like an iPhone now is different than an iPhone 6 and iPhone 13. Still do the same phone call, but now you're having more apps and features with the iPhone, the newer one than the older one. Thank you. Our next question is going to come from Stephen. Stephen, please state your name, where you're from, and ask your question. Uh, this is Steve from South Austin, New York. Um, if I have uh, a Curatron PEMF machine that William Pollock recommended, are you saying that is this almost as good as the newest technology, or is it worth upgrading to the new technology that you mentioned? That's the first question. And the second thing is, is PMF significant enough that I should actually do it? Or should I just take that same time and take a barefoot walk in nature? So I can't answer the question, the first question, because I'm not familiar with that device. So I won't be able to comment on something I don't have a comparison to or, or, or understanding of. So I'll leave that off the table right now. However, what you want to look at is that most PMEF devices on the market, and there's hundreds, by the way, right? Um, they don't have a patent on a the signal. They're just, they're just a device, 
So there's people who sell PMS like, oh, I've been selling PMS for 20 years. And it's like, you just turn it up. But one thing you have to be careful is more is not better. And that's the challenge where I see what, especially the ones that like, when I used to go to conferences a lot, integrative conference, holds a conference, sports medicine conferences, for example, as well, they would have PMF that had like these ropes. They would like, you know, they're like kind of these corded ropes and they'd wrap it around like the football players. We see it in sports medicine all the time, like the injure turn on and they would turn on and you actually can sometimes see a popping or even a zapping. You know, and on certain levels, like, oh, I feel a little bit better. I thought it hurt. I, I didn't like those things. It was too strong. But as we understand now, you actually can put too much signal in. You can actually increase too much nitric oxide. You can actually induce damage. So more is not better. Everybody wants to get on something and crank it up and turn it up so they can feel it. And that's why when they used to put these things on orthopedic sides or sports medicine, this is generic because I don't want to include everybody. This might be a, a bad statement to say, but people like to feel something and see something. And if it's a little bit, no pain, no gain, they're like, why am I getting this thing? And they put it on and pop, 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 zap, 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 zap. They felt, okay, I'm getting energized or something like that. That's not how it works. So we always want to look at like, you know, if something is patented also, that's why I like with the previous technology I was talking about, the Kafka original 1998 broadband signal is that once that was patented, no one else could use that signal. So everybody else was talking about it, around it, aside of it, but they were never delivered. It. Now that they have like this extreme broadband, no one else can even do that. So we're just kind of moving further. Like when someone actually does the R and D and is able to patent it, then everybody else is just trying to sell you something outside and around it that is like either generic or they're using a data or a study that's someone else's technology but not theirs, right? So I was like, just like our boss Merrick, our curcumin, our boswellia, our ginger, like that's what we've studied. That's what's studied. That's what's patented. That's what's clinically studied. That's what's in our product at that dose. That's what we're trying to do with these kind of PMEA technologies. It is what is studied. It is the one that's kind of the, the ground. Now, there's a, someone else might have another signal or another patent. Severely doubt it. But if they do, then good for them. Then they should be able to show that to you. So that's an answer. Now, the difference between the PMEA and just going out and grounding is different because grounding is just giving you the signal of the earth, which is important. Go out in nature, especially if you're in New York, you got to get out in nature. I don't know where you're at, but if you're in the city, go out to nature. Right? That's why everybody likes to go to the nature in New York, you know, whatever, Hamptons, whatever people go out to. But um, in terms of what the PMEA is doing, is it, it's an activation, right? So it's actually delivering more than just that grounding effect. Grounding effect is just the simplest thing that everybody on earth gets for free. But now we're trying to look at can we use technology to uh, enhance certain health benefits. So um, you, you just mentioned um, your Buzz Merrick um, product. Where would we say, and I think you said earlier that there was, you guys do have clinical research on that. Where would we find the clinical research for the Bosmeric? So if you go to, if you go to a bosmeric.com, B-O-S-M-E-R-I-C.com, and under the side of the, the data, you'll see the research. We actually, I, I don't have an updated one, but we have one from 2020 uh, towards the middle or end of 2020, which we actually have all the 106, at that time it was 165. Now there's 185 uh, published peer-reviewed clinical studies on the curcumin C3 complex that's in Bosmeric. It also will have that PDF, not only there, it'll break it out into clinical, preclinical, in vivo, in vitro, you know, like studies like that. And I'll have the link where you click on the PDF and it'll take you to the PubMed study itself. So um, now I would challenge anybody's like, well, where's everybody else's studies? Again, like I mentioned, 25 from the top five other companies, then most of them are white papers, right? And then everybody else, which is the other thousand products in the market have no safety, no efficacy data. Remember 43% of all curcumin on the market is synthetically made, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, which, which we talked about. Go back and listen to my lecture on, if you take ibuprofen, take this first, but then you have to understand there's a reason why we're giving certain ingredients at a certain potency and a certain purity to attain a certain efficacy with a certain amount of safety. Everybody else is, again, selling someone else's data. That's what devices do. That's what the supplement market does. But we always want to go back, like, can someone show that it does? And that's why we consider ourselves the leader in the anti-inflammatory market in terms of evidence-based therapies. But there's a reason also why it's a little bit on a premium side, because you have to do all these ensuring technologies in terms of how you grow it, how do you non-irradiate it, how do you purify it, how you put it in that dose, and then how you bilayer sustain release at 20-minute onset of action, eight-hour sustain release versus everybody else. Great. Thank you so much, doctor. And with that, we conclude our Q&A for this session. So uh, in order to let the audience thank you, we're going to open up the mics and everyone can say thank you to Dr. Sunil Pai. Thank you, Dr. Pai. Thank you, Dr. Pai. Everyone. Lecture. Some time. Dr. Pai. Thank you.